Today is All Saints Sunday. Today we as a community have decided to remember those who have died. And I know this service is a favorite for many of you. And if I would interview you individually, I'm certain many of you would say it's because of the candle lighting, right? But I take it a step further. I think it is because we as a community agree that it is okay to grieve. And somehow that is a freeing decision. Grief is a powerful emotion, deep, unpredictable, sneaks up upon us unexpectedly, calls the value of our everyday lives into question, sometimes makes us even non-functional. In many cultures, historically, there is a period of mourning after the death of a loved one. Often it is a whole year that was set aside as a dedicated period of grief. <coughs> and though we don't practice an official period of mourning anymore, people often describe that after a year, the grief loses its intensity, its urgency. We've lived through a year without that person birthdays, anniversaries, holiday, the first anniversary of their death, we relived memories with or without that person. And the grief might be still there, but there's also room for different emotions. However, the grief is not gone. Grief will from now on be mostly part of, that, of all the memories connected with that person maybe as an afterthought, but still be there. A funny memory that comes to your mind about an adventure you had together and you'll smile, but then also feel the sting of grief because he or she has died. So it's all too understandable that grief isn't a welcome emotion. Maybe one we accept for a certain time, but then it'd be better under control locked up or fenced in, and only let out under well-guarded conditions, sometimes even ignored. But the trouble is that grief makes its own rules. Grief can hit you years later, out of the blue. And then it's so hard to explain, right? I'm grieving for my friend. Oh, I'm sorry, when did she die? 17 years ago. Oh. It's been a long time. Therefore, I think it is wonderful to remember the dead as a community, to agree as a community that it is okay to grieve, and to give it a dedicated space and time, this worship service, and especially the candle lighting. This year, I invite you to also say the name of your loved one when you light a candle, out loud, or in your heart. It seems to be such a little thing to do, but it is powerful because the name has become the placeholder for all the memories and emotions connected with that person. And that is what remains here with us. We like to name things. We have to name things. It seems to be a human trait. Everything around us has a name. We like to name things and we love to name people or pets. Names are important. Being called by our name is important. Names are usually the first information we share when we get to know someone. Our name throughout our life becomes part of who we are, a part of our identity. It shapes us and we shape it. And the name remains important even when the future you imagined didn't become reality, even when your loved one has died. The name may now be colored with grief and pain and memories, but also love, a lot of love. We might not say our loved one's name as often as we would like to, because there would be too much to explain. The name is now inseparably connected with their death, and that is too big a story to fit into any casual conversation. Maybe just thinking of the name is too painful. But their names deserve room and space. 
because of they also shaped our lives. They made us who we are now, through grief and pain, through memories and love. And our loved ones are still part of our lives. Their names are part of who we are. Even if we can't say your name, loved one, as often as we like to, God gives us this promise in Isaiah 43. Do not be afraid, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. I have called you by your name. You are mine. God knows all our names. God knows the names of our loved ones. God knows their names and calls them by their names. And God keeps them safe and God's love forever. I have called you by your name. You are mine. Amen.